We have live with us, this is uh, Dr. Natalie Carlton. She's uh, one of the main organizers of the uh, DICATS Symposium. Uh, and uh, she's here with us. Uh, do you want to say a few words, Natalie? Just good morning. <laughs> and that was an amazing sequence of presenters and presentations. Uh, really enjoyed it. Nice to connect to you all via the World Wide Web. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, yeah. So, so we will be handing the stream over to Natalie at the end of this, uh, and we're gonna have like uh, some videos, pre-recorded videos, right? Uh, kind of like uh, playing, and then uh, we will before we kind of transition over to Moscow via London, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So uh, I'm gonna hand over the mic to Mayesh, and uh, yeah, take it away. Okay, thanks, Susan. Um, okay, it's nice to be back on the track. Uh, is, were there any questions that the audience uh, wanted to have, uh, but there was no time for any of the presenters? Like I, I know Shunin couldn't have a question, so if there's any question, then we could address that first and then carry on. I think. Okay, I guess it's. I guess the floor is open. Okay. Um, I think uh, the first. The first thing that I'd like to um, kind of. Uh, have more more uh, more input on was because um, Shuning and uh, Eugene. Um, I think both of you have worked with clients and participants, and um, and you've understood that uh, even though social, I mean, even though uh, digital technology is quite beneficial for them, there's still a lot of um, physical challenges that you uh, that that you encounter in your practice. So, um, what are some of the ways that you've kind of managed to? introduce it to, to the elderly. Is there any uh, thing that you want to further talk about? Something that um, something that's helped you a tactic or a strategy that's made it easier for them to transition to something of the technology? Yeah for for me it was the the main issue was the motion sickness. Uh, because VR is already quite uh, intuitive, you put it over your eyes and then you see the stuff. It is, it is that part is the intuitive part. The the troubling part is the using the controller to try to select stuff. So, to uh, to get over that hurdle, I just completely avoided it. Just uh, took it away from them for now. I know the next generation to come, they will they will come in ready with these skills. But for now, for now, it is. Uh, too too much trouble. It's too much trouble for me. Do you want, do you want to add anything? Pertaining to the elderly population, is it? Uh, it, it um, just the physical uh, disability. What has to, been helpful? Yeah, for uh, introducing. I, I think if we could go back to the case of Cody. Um, by introducing the digital media, it really allowed him greater access to art making. Yeah, and that was what I found was um, hindering from um, from art making. You know, having the opportunity to to participate, and that really um, challenged me to find an alternative way to enable him to um, have that lah. If otherwise, this creativity would be left dormant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Makes sense. Um, in terms of um, in terms of introducing technology in, in in practice, especially for art therapists, the clinical practice, um, there's like a range of so. Um, then then is going to start his practice soon, and then you've already been doing it. Um, I'm going to start soon, and in the first year. So um, if you could advise uh, other art therapists out there on what would be the first step to take forward to, uh, how would you suggest that to, what would be the advice that you would provide so you can just go on. <clears throat> just play, um, it's art material, right? So explore it, use it, see where you can go and, um, and where it develops. And I mean, YouTube is brilliant in that regard. So just pop onto YouTube and see how you can use digital art. Like um, the photography um, that we've had earlier in the light show, that's amazing. I never thought of that. And I can imagine how a client can use the space. Um, and again, also um, just exploring different media and applications that's out there because I mean, they, they're constantly updating. So keeping up to date with that, it's definitely it's a responsibility. Um, but at the same time, it can be fun. So 
I, I would say just have fun. Would you like to go next? Or? Um, for me, I feel like um, as a digital native and having to having grown up with the exposure of digital media, um, technology is something that comes easily to me, to my generation, to my peers, everyone seated here. And um, I, I, I do understand that there is this sense of um, this, that, that digital media is daunting, technology is scary, and there's so many prejudice, um, many art therapists have prejudice towards the use of it. But I think we've seen examples of um, the limitless possibilities that um, digital media can bring. And maybe for a start, we'll just let ourselves um, be familiar and um, learn some learn to play, um, immerse in ourselves in some um, digital art making um, and that and then you know and only you having the competence competency in using the media yourself and understanding the in and outs of an app of a software and it is then then we can be competent to introduce it to our clients in a way that is safe for them. Yeah, I agree completely. Would you like to add something then? Okay, um, for me, uh, as an artist, my first thought was... Um, yeah, for me, um, what it is is, firstly, whether it's cool or not, right? Whether um, people would be attracted to it. Um, what I realized is that my what I had thought about it wouldn't apply to everybody else. Everybody uh, like people would use it a certain way. Um, let's say for the light painting, right? That I did. Um, I never thought of thought of it as a, a therapeutic uh, medium for kids to use, right? Um, what I did was to me it's cool, like. How can I push this further? And then people use it in a way for other functions. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And um, and for Eugene, like if since since you've already been in the in those waters of technology and been been using that for quite a while, um, if if you could suggest something that for someone who's not been in in those uh, areas that they want to explore, how would they start about? I think uh, it's a lot of patience especially for the Channel News Asia episode where I was teaching uh, four elderly folks how to make a game. The things like uh, double-clicking and single-clicking, that, that makes a lot of difference. So like in, in the game engine that I was teaching them, uh, some, one of them didn't did understand the difference between double-clicking and single-clicking, uh, a certain thing, and that was crucial. So I had to, what I did was I changed the setting on, the, on her Windows PC to the to make double clicking very slow so she could click click and then ha have a successful double click so that was how i overcome but it takes a lot a lot of patience a lot of patience yeah i think for myself as well um when i started working more with documentation processes um it was quite basic a few years back when i was just working with things like polaroid so like to to get them adapt that they can they can take a picture right now and have it immediately for the scrapbook so something that was quite quite basic and then within a few years there's already other technologies that and they've already been already been art therapists or artists who've been introducing that into their practice um so um when you think about this uh, you, when you think about the pace of which it's going through uh, and you understand that the more it goes forward the more it unfolds and um, with advantages also come differences and also come um, privacy issues and things like that. Um, I think it becomes much more difficult also to filter out what is actually helpful and what is just out there for the fact that it's commercially used, commercially used or it's just promoted out there. So um, if you could um, categorize some safety aspects or some, or some uh, categories that someone who wants to use technology has to first see if the application supports those things. Then um, do you, like any of you could uh, just list out what would be the first thing that you would see? Uh, what's your priority list of what, how you choose technology to be used? So, um, so anyone wants to start? 
so for me, what was very important, and even with my slideshow, um, I really had to research how is this going to keep my, my participants safe. Um, so I went into the terms and conditions of the website, yeah. So over there, the imagery that you guys uploaded, it's going to stay there. So I can I can take it off. Um, so it's not uploaded to the internet, it's uploaded to that site and I can remove it again. So I think things like that and concentrating on realizing that whatever you put out there, wherever you save it, it can remain there. So I'm um, thinking about that in that regard, that was quite important for me as well. And because I like applications and because I like apps, I like to know where my content is going. So thinking about that and also how am I going to be storing client artwork in separate folders on one device? That, that, that's a mission in itself so that they don't happen onto each other's artworks. Um, is it my device? So maybe considerations like that. And that, again, is where collaboration with designers come in, in hand because then I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Do you know how to do this? And and again, collaborating with industry professionals that have the know-how because I don't necessarily have that knowledge yet. So that's mine. For for VR, we have to well, we have to check whether they, with the caregivers, their caregivers whether they are suitable for the for VR or whether they are prone to motion sickness. Then we test a bit. I, what I would do is test a little bit first. Let them see a safe thing for five seconds and then ask them constantly, do you feel giddy? But after a while with, uh, with the Oculus Go, I felt that I, I didn't have to ask that too many times already. It was quite confident already that we, we could just pop it on and they would be enjoying themselves. Um, I, I think for my case with Cody, um, when it made therapeutic sense for me and then um, after the discussion with Cody that it's something that he might want to explore. Um, a second informed consent form was given out um, to seek the consent from his parents um, that highlights um, the risk that entails with um, the use of digital media, such as um, the, the device may be, um, uh, may be stolen and, and what are the um, steps that I, I would take to erase all information, wipe out the information remotely from another device, um, how um, the artworks would be stored safely, will be encrypted. Um, so this was also communicated to the organization where I was work working at and um, I received support and that also kind of helped me move forward in, in this introduction of the media. Sorry. Um, so um, another thing that I was thinking about that we could kind of um, speak more about was the the factor of the, the factor of dependency. So uh, it's already quite out there for like neurotypical children, not just children who go to school that they're already spending a lot of time immersed in these technologies. And the more interactive it becomes, the more addictive it becomes in certain sense, and the more dependent you get on it. Um, how how can as medical professionals we try to curb that this doesn't reach clinical implications in technology when using uh, in a therapeutic sense. Like, how can we make sure that things are guarded in, sort of, in, in a certain way that it's quite safe, but at the same time, there's no rate of dependency that happens eventually after a few sessions or a few treatment plans? Um, for me, I would uh, relate that to art media again. Um, I'm doing that a lot because that's what my talk was about. But concentrating on the fact that some paints have very strong odors, then you go to different paints, right? You go to watercolor. Same with applications. Some are very mindless. There's no um, direction or, or guidance. But some are quite creative. Some are communicative. Some have social elements to it. So thinking about the end use of how this application is used, that could definitely steer us into a better direction as well. So in encouraging those applications a bit more and also putting a time frame on it like we've earlier mentioned that around about 30 minutes that's kind of where we the good spot is at so also thinking about how we are, are in teaching the skill because clearly this is a skill that we can translate to our clients but how do we teach it um, so I think that would be the way that I would approach that. Is there anything you want to add? Are we taking questions from, yeah. 
um, yes, yeah, so if there's any questions from Natalie for, but we'll have a delay, right? Sorry? But we'll have a delay. No, no, she's, she's oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there any questions that, uh, any, any comment that you'd like to? I mean, no direct questions, uh, just appreciating the commentary and the responses, um, especially around informed consent and ongoing informed consent and discussing, um, you know, responsibilities of the therapist, responsibilities of the client, the risks associated, the benefits. Um, I think that's a really important aspect. Also, Alex, what you were just sharing about, um, you know, the comparison of media and how um, some applications and, um, you know, media formats in the digital media, they uh, I like the comparison to smelliness and the complication versus unidirectional, something that's more direct, simplified, um, that of immediacy versus something that's more protracted process and understanding it, um, working with a product. Uh, anyway, I just appreciate all that commentary. Uh, no questions. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. So I think um, we can round it off. Um, like as as art therapists and as artists who are willing to collaborate in in the medical setting, we understand that I mean interactive technology has quite a lot of potential, and it's definitely going to get mm -hmm. there in a in a place where it is going to be potentially beneficial for them. Um, even even with the fact that you can record the process of the work, not just the final product, which is very which is a very important okay. uh, shift compared to traditional art making process where the process is forgotten eventually, but with this, something like that could stay behind. And um, in my own work of practice, I, I understood that the reflection that I had while looking at the video later when I was making the presentation was much more of a um, giving sense that it informed me of what I did and uh, how I did it compared to what the picture showed in the end as just a sculpture. So uh, things like that was completely beneficial and um, look forward to like using that later in our own practice. Um, so th thank you everyone for attending, and I think it's time. That we close it, yeah. I just wanted to say a couple of words, uh, but I think you know, looking through the different presentations, I think uh, it's a. Uh, I think it's important to note that, you know, uh, whatever our expertise, because, you know, uh, a lot of us come from different backgrounds. Some of us come from healthcare, some of us come from, uh, uh, from an art making background, some of us are art therapists, you know. Um, we have interests and we have feelings uh, with regards to digital technology, whether you like it or not. You know, it's, it's here, it's, it's, sometimes it's in our face, and sometimes, you know, we are digital natives, sometimes we are digital immigrants, right? But uh, I think the important thing uh, to know is that we are shaped by it because this is how society is like now. So I think um, the, the, the presenters here have brought up very important points about how we need to critically engage with technology. We need to reflect on how we use it. Uh, and I think you know, uh, uh, these, th these are uh, great takeaways from, from our discussion over here and our presentations. So yeah. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all of you for being here. Uh, and just as I, as I mentioned, you know, uh, after this, we're actually going to hand over the stream uh, symbolically, okay, over to the uh, pre-recorded videos. And then uh, I invite you to stay on because uh, we have this room until about 9 p.m. Uh, and we'll play the YouTube streams. And then uh, you can see, kind of get a sense of how uh, it, it's maybe viewed on 360. Uh, as well as uh, you can respond to the Q&A via social media. Uh, uh, just now I was looking through some of the chats, you know, and I think uh, so far we haven't had any questions via uh, YouTube, but uh, I have, I've seen a lot of comments, some good comments, you know, about like, I think how all of you, mm -hmm. all, how all of you have been doing like great presentations, you know. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, we invite you to uh, stay on or even go back and, and, and participate online. Yeah, okay. I have one question. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe we have like time for one last question. Yeah. Um, I saw in one of the presentations, uh, um, one of the disadvantages quoted was the potentially isolating nature of technology. Mm. Would you maybe elaborate, or somebody elaborate on that? Mm. I think it was Shunings, right? Yeah, I think it's Shunings. <laughs> yeah. So um, that one came about in. Um, a literature I I read. Um, so I, I guess it, because in the normal um, in a normal um, context of art therapy, um, 
Actually, I, I also observed this as I was working with Cody while he was looking on looking at his screen. Um, I, I I noticed the lack of eye contact, um, and I see how that could be. Um, how you know when you are immersed in creation, and maybe you know that that may may feel isolating in a sense. But then once he he was co he had completed his artwork, that was where we we were able to um, look at the picture and 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 process about it. So yeah, does that answer your question? Okay. And, yeah. and and also I think maybe in a group setting where we encourage um, social connection and interaction if um, and and maybe you know with VR that can be challenged you know because we are no longer confined to our own computers or iPads you know we we have that ability to engage and ex make exchanges with one another so maybe it may not be so isolating after all Great. Thank you for the question and thank you for the response. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, with that, uh, we will uh, hand over the stream. Okay, and so I think over, uh, guys, we're going to stop the stream. Yeah, and Natalie, yeah, you'll take over on your side. Yes, we are ready to take over. Okay. Arun is in the driver's seat. Okay, great. Okay, have a great one. Yeah, thank you from Singapore. Right. Yeah. Bye bye. Farewell. Yeah.